Hello, Countdown is everywhere. Welcome to a new game of Countdown. I'm delighted to say we have our first champion of our new series. Here he is, Keith Albans. Keith has come wearing his working clothes today because, uh, as you know, if you saw him win yesterday, a magnificent win of 60 points. What a marvellous start for any champion. 60 points. He is a Methodist minister in York. So very good luck to Keith Albans. He started very well indeed. But he hasn't yet met Stephen Balment. Let's welcome him, his challenger. Stephen Balment. <laughs> Stephen's from Leicester, married and works as a computer programmer. His outside interests include photography and motorcycle road racing, which is apparently something of a family occupation, since both his brother and brother-in-law are racers, and he'd love to take part in a road race himself. Now, I don't know what sort of a bike that uh, Stephen has got, but he's hoping to have a triumph this evening. So, uh, good luck. To good luck to you, Stephen. Thank you. Now, yesterday, when Bill Tidy was in Dictionary Corner, he had tetanus. Well, I mean, he had the word tetanus, that mm -hmm. is. So we had to get rid of him. But today, we do welcome back a man who always injects fun into the proceedings, never gives us the needle. In fact, we've got him under our skin. Welcome back to Giles Brandreth. Hello, it's lovely to be with you again, and I'd like to begin with a fairly penetrating question. I want to ask you, why do elephants have long tails? The answer, of course, is so that they can wrap them around daisies and hang over the edge of cliffs. Now, that's just a thought. Uh, why am I here is another thought. I'll tell you. I'm simply here to introduce a remarkable person to you. We've trawled the intellectual waters of the world, and we've come up with an amazing mermaid whose brains are only matched by her beauty. Would you please greet salute and cheer the one and only <laughs> Catherine Clark. Oh dear, they always make me laugh, those introductions. <laughs> <but. laughs> we should have a whole programme of, compiled of all your introductions all strung together. <laughs> what fun. <laughs> anyway, here we are then. Stephen Balmont is waiting to play Keith Albans. And Stephen, you're going to go first. A uh, consonant, please. Thank you. R. Another consonant. S. And another. L. A vowel. O. Another vowel. E. A consonant. T. A vowel. A. A consonant. N. And a vowel, please. And an I. Thank you. We want, of course, any long word you can get. Right, Stephen. Nine. Nine. The first words he utters on countdown. <laughs> and he says nine. Fantastic. Nine. Keith. Nine. <laughs> OK. Stephen. Relations. Relations. And Keith. Relations. Relations. And Giles? Uh, I have got a nine as well. Not relations, though I did have a distant uncle foo who was an Oriental. His family, they were all Orientals. It was he who said that a gentleman never swears at a lady in front of his wife. Uh, anyway, Orientals would count, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. So there are two nine-letter words there. Yes, yeah, so well done to Keith and Stephen. Fantastic stuff. <laughs> Marvellous start. Uh, and fantastic for you, Stephen, to get that on your... Uh... First, uh, your first round of countdown. Well done. 18 points, of course. Nine-letter word gets 18 points. So, great start. And now, Keith, follow that, sir. <laughs> Consonant, please. Thank you. W. 
And another. L. And another consonant. D. And another consonant. T. Um, vowel, please. O. And another vowel. And an E. Uh, and another vowel. And an I. A consonant. B. Um, a consonant. And an R. Thank you. Now, round two. Seven. Seven, Stephen. Also seven. Really? Here, Stephen, seven. Twirled. Twirled. Twirled and... Broiled. Deep. Broiled and twirled. Do we accept those? Mm-hmm. No question. Yes. Okay, any better, Charles? No, oh, I'm afraid not. No, good grief. No. I spelt bright, B-R-I-T-E. <laughs> <laughs> so now, with the scores at 25 apiece, we go into round three and look at you, Stephen. Uh, consonant, please. Okay, N. And another. F. And another. N. A vowel, please. A. And another vowel. U. And another vowel. A again. A consonant. C. A vowel. I. And another vowel, please. And an E. Thank you. Very nice, if I may say so. Okay, Stephen. Uh, six. Six. <coughs> six, and Keith? Five. Five, right. Keith's five. Fauna. A fauna. Yes, fauna. Uh, Steve? Nuance. That's uh, N-U-A-N-C-E. Nuance. Yes, two nice words, actually. They sound, both sound nice. I mean, nuance sounds nice. Fauna sounds nice. But nuance gets it, Giles. Mm, there's a word, though, that doesn't sound nice at all in now. I, this is a true story, once asked Princess Anne what she thought naff meant, because you may remember she made it rather famous by asking some photographers to naff off, and she looked at me astonished and said, oh, I assumed it was merely an acronym standing for not awfully friendly. So um, that's the origin of naff, but there is a seven-letter word there, uh, which I'd like to cash in on, and that's finance. Yes, finance. Well, Stephen's doing fine, he's got... 31 and 25, as we do go to the numbers game, and we ask Keith to choose six numbers, please. Um, one from the top, two from the second, and three from the third. Thank you. Three, one, seven, one, six, and 50. Right. And your figure's 141. 141. One, four, one. So, 141. Let's have you, Keith. How many? 141. Stephen? 141. Okay, Keith, take us through it, please. 3 times 50, 
is 150. 3 times 50 is 150. And 7 plus 1 plus 1. OK, 7 plus the two ones is 9. Take away. And subtract it. Well done, sir. Abracadabra. Well done. Stephen whispered to me before the game that he thought his numbers were his weak point, but you're going to get ten points, are you? Yes, exactly the same way. Exactly the same. So, well done, Stephen. He's got his ten points. <laughs> and, of course, we started the proceedings with nine lesser words, so we've got a marvellous halfway score here. It's almost like an end score in some games. 41 and 35. Very good score at the halfway points. Time for a quick word from Giles. Mm, very good score. Very big post bag greeted me here. Lots of marvellous letters from you. Thank you very much. Still some people trying to send in short uh, poems. Uh, we had uh, one that I received. I couldn't uh, decipher the handwriting who it was from, but it was uh, another poem dedicated to a late lamented pet. This is a poem called The Dog That Died. It's not as short as the shortest, but it's quite brief and it's really rather sad. It simply goes like this. Spot is not which has a certain uh, brief <laughs> charm about it. it I would, really though. I... Dog on short, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> End of part one, folks. See you again for part two before very long. Back again on Countdown. Our challenger is slightly in the lead there. Stephen Balment from Leicester on 41. Keith Albans, our reigning champion from York, on 35. So now, Keith, over to you. Consonant, please. Z. Good start. Sorry. Um, I'll try again, then. Yeah. Another consonant, please. And that's an R. Looking better. Another consonant. L. And another. And an S. Vowel. O. And another vowel. I. And another vowel. E. A consonant. D. And another consonant, please. OK. And an S. So, here we go. Yes, Keith. Six. Six has Keith and Stephen. Eight. Eight. Right, here are the six from Keith. Soiled. Soiled, yes. But the answer lies in the eight, we think. Soldiers. Soldiers for eight. Well done. <laughs> yes, onward Christian soldiers. Should have seen that, Keith. <laughs> Giles. I should have got that because little, uh, little bread soldiers are my favourite, my, the only way of eating a boiled egg. But I was distracted by another form of favourite food as far as I'm concerned, the rissole, which is there, but only seven letters. OK, so that's good for you, Stephen. Put you on 49, 49, 35, and it's your turn in round six. Consonant, please. G. And another. T. And another. And P. A vowel, please. A. And another vowel. U. And another vowel. I. A uh, consonant, please. S. A vowel. E. And a consonant, please. And an F. Right, here's the clock on round six.
Stephen? Seven. Seven, and Keith? Five. Five, what's the five, Keith? Pages. Pages for five, we have a seven. Upstage. Mm. Up stage, okay. No need to look doubtful about that. No question of it. It's both a position on the stage and also, yes, indeed, quite right. <laughs> Clearly worthy of a seated ovation, but uh, I'm about now to upstage you and possibly to earn a standing ovation, who knows, with an eight letter word taking the military, the illusion that we had a moment ago with soldiers. I am going to offer you fatigues. Mmm. 56 35. Giant score here by Stephen. 56 35. Three rounds to go. Last letters game over to Keith. Oh, okay. um, a consonant, please. D. And another. Thank you. And a D. And another consonant. L. And a vowel. U. And a vowel. I. And another vowel. E. Consonant. Y. A vowel. O. And a consonant. And an R. Thank you. And here's the countdown for the last time on the letters. Yes, Keith. <laughs> eight. Right. Okay. He's risking eight, obviously. He's got to go for it now. Stephen? Seven. Seven. Right. We'll hear the seven. Broiled. Again. Again. How oh, funny. Broiled again. Bro broiled again, eh? <laughs> oh, dear. No, <laughs> you've got to laugh, haven't you? Now eight, uh, Keith. <laughs> Redoubly. While we're looking up the word, can I show off with uh, my only seven-letter word? There were a couple that I saw. One was uh, builder, and uh, the other one was boulder. You know, when you um, have too many drinks on the rocks, you get a little bolder. <laughs> B-O-U-L-D-E-R. Uh, are we allowing redoubly? Redoubly, I'm afraid not. Redouble, which is both a yes. verb and a noun, but it's, it's not an adjective. So, 63.35. Now then, numbers, Stephen, please. Uh, one from the top row, please. Thank you. Two okay. from the second. Yes. And three from the third. All right. That's eight, four, two, one, seven, one hundred. Yes, Cecil. One, four, seven, Richard. Oh, well, he likes these low numbers today, doesn't he? One hundred and forty-seven. Here we go. Well, the interesting thing about that game was it was a race to see who, which of you two could finish first. I think you both finished on about six seconds each, so well done to both of you. So, Stephen. 147. 147, and Keith? 147. Okay, let's hear Stephen's 147, please. 4 plus 1 is 5. Mm -hmm. 4 plus 1 is 5. Multiplied by 8 is 40. Multiplied by 8 is 40. And add the 7 and the 100. Yep, add the 7 and the 100. I think there are lots of ways of doing this. But that's one of them, 147. Mm. Good. Yes, Keith? I did it the same way. We did it the same way, OK. Well, we're going to applaud you as well, because that's very good. <laughs> so now, uh, the interesting point about the conundrum, the conundrum is always interesting for one reason or another. Um, often it, of course, decides the game. In this particular case, uh, you know that obviously Stevens won, but he's on 73. If he gets... 10, if he gets the conundrum, it will be the highest score ever 
in any ordinary game of countdown. So that's little something, isn't it, Stephen? That's made you really sweat on the top line, hasn't it? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Put you entirely at ease as we go into the conundrum. <laughs> OK, well, here we go, then. Please now reveal today's countdown conundrum. Oh, yes, 27 seconds. Fantastic. 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 Well, what can I say? <laughs> yes, well, that says it all, doesn't it? Fantastic. And as I said, with 10 points, 83 points, not only the uh, countdown champion having dislodged Keith, but... Uh, the all-time high score on an ordinary nine-round game of Countdown. So, Stephen Valmont from Leicester, fantastic! <laughs> well, Keith, you had a marvellous win yesterday, of course. Very good score of 60, and you started off in fine form today, but uh, he streaked ahead, didn't he? He did, yeah. Such so, is life. Well, indeed. Very philosophical. <laughs> uh, now you, no, I've enjoyed it. Yes, been good. and just people that would be interested, you're wearing your cricket umpires jersey, aren't you? Oh yes, the Association of Cricket Umpires. Yeah. Well, let's hope you have a good summer. It's not an easy job being an umpire, is it? So No. 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 Uh, so you're sympathy with Catherine, presumably, in this case. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. Except, except when she disallows, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then she's wrong. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, Keith, thank you very much indeed, and very good luck to you and, of course, all your congregation in York. Thank you very thank much. You. Keith Alban. <laughs> Keith, of course, uh, forgot to say, gets the good book. You've already got one good book. This is the, this is the other good book you're getting. Right. Giles. There's been a flurry of poetry actually composed in the course of the programme. And uh, I must share just some quick ones with you. These are poems dedicated to late lamented dogs. We've got one here that reads, Fido has died, oh. Uh, rather a longer one here, offered by Catherine Clark. Uh, Rin Tin Tin is Fin Fin Fin, <laughs> which is really very neat, isn't it? Uh, uh, oh, rather a good one, this, I think. Rover is over, <laughs> but the shortest, and as far as I'm concerned, the best so far is one created by John Mead, the Orson Welles of the game show circuit, our producer, and it goes like this. Rex is X. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tomorrow, Stephen, you'll be up against Doubtless. a gentleman by the name of Jez Gill from Barmouth in Wales. So good luck to him, of course, and good luck to all of you, and we very much hope that we shall be all together same time tomorrow. Till then, goodbye. And there is another countdown tomorrow, but it's circa 1999. Well, as the fourth test ended one day early, we've a different selection of programmes for you this afternoon here on 4. And next, scary sibling rivalry with Monta Williams.